So I casually wanted to do this video. Um, I didn't set up my big camera. I'm cleaning. <clears throat> my nose is stuffy. It's really, really dusty in here. Um, I thought I would just get on my vlog camera and just talk to you guys about um, film photography because a lot of you wanted to see what I ended up picking up, what I'm going to be taking to Japan with me, what I've been testing out as well. Because I got three different film cameras. I stated in my previous video or in my vlog, but for years I've been trying to delve into film photography. I just haven't had the time or chance to dedicate to it, really sit down and research and make sure that I am one, getting like my money's worth when it comes to film and not wasting it, but two, really understanding um, shooting manually. And I had been shooting manually for a few years now, so I understand the aperture and the ISO and the f-stop and all that stuff. Photography, film photography is a little bit different. Oof, I'm out of breath. Um, I should take these off. I don't know if the glare is really bad. Before I get started though, a lot of you asked me where these are from. These are my prescription glasses. They're from Fendi. I was able to get them off of Matches Fashion for like 100 bucks on sale. So always check their sale area. And then um, my ring and necklace. They're from a brand called Legier. Uh, they're based out of LA. And I absolutely adore the owner. She is a sweetheart. And yeah, they're my favorite jewelry pieces. It's just onyx with a diamond in the middle. Um, and she has a ton of different styles. So <sighs> again, I don't, I don't know why I'm out of breath. I wrote down in my notebook. I took some notes as to all the topics I wanted to hit on. Uh, like I said, I bought three film cameras. Um, and I got them all online off of eBay. And you really, really have to sift through and research and read the descriptions just so that you're getting your money's worth. Because um, I bought maybe, I bought one inexpensive camera. Then I bought like a mid-range camera and then I got like what will be hopefully, and it'll last me a while. Um, the more expensive kind of camera. I am starting up, I just showed shooting on 35 millimeter uh, film. I might move on to a medium format camera at some point. They are pretty pricey, uh, especially the ones that I was looking at that I want. Of course, they're like over a thousand, you know, over $1,500. So at some point, but to start off, um, I have a point and shoot, actually two point and shoots, and then one a rangefinder is it at the end of my Japan trip and let you guys know how I made out with these cameras because um, I'm currently testing them out now and I'm shooting I have film in two of the cameras uh, and then I ordered some more film to take with me to Japan again I'm just kind of feeling it out but anyway I also got some techie bits just so that I'm prepared for this trip because I feel like I'm gonna take a ton of pictures um, I even got a new lens that I don't have here. I have two things that are on their way. So I figured I'd just talk about them really quickly. The reason why I've always wanted to shoot film and why I've been talking about it so long with my photographer who's based out of New York, we talk about it all the time. I just love, I mean, we get the instant gratification with, you know, a digital photo and I'm able to say, okay, well, let's take, you know, 200 more of these. And whatnot but um with film there's just something so exciting about having to drop off your film and not knowing what your pictures are going to look like but i just love the texture it adds to my work my feed you tend to appreciate the developing of film and this is what photographers back in the day used to used to have and film is just another thing to to tack on and add to my work and it's just super super inspiring so it just it, it really really makes me happy i watched lizzie from shot shot on the street or in the street i can't remember i'll put it here i'll link it down below but she's always been like my biggest inspiration when it comes to film photography because she we work 
along the same lines. You know, we do fashion, beauty, all that stuff, lifestyle. Um, and I've always looked at her pictures and not the ones of, of her in them. I mean, they're, they're great, but pictures of, of just her surrounding places where she's gone on vacation and just moments in time that you're able to capture through film and they look amazing. A lot of these things I purchased, um, based off of her recommendation. I also watched a channel called Negative Feedback. I'll put that here too. Great, great um, photographer. Also William Verbeck, Verbeck, Verbeek. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but I learned a lot of things. And uh, there's a couple other different YouTube channels about film photography that I just watched. I binge watched one weekend and definitely gave a lot of good tips, um, references, they definitely helped with choosing what type of film to shoot on. This is me delving into film photography and taking it serious. So um, I'll start off with cameras. So I got this Canon, um, what is it, a zoom, it's, so it's the Canon SureShot 60 zoom lens. And as you can hear, it just zooms in, zooms out. I mean, I know a lot of people don't recommend these because the zoom mechanism over time, it tends to go, but um, this one seems to be working great. I paid $8 for it on eBay um, and $7 for shipping, but it seems like it's working. It's in really, really good condition. I haven't put film in it yet. I am once I get the film in, but all the functions seem to be working great on them. Once I bought the batteries, I bought these little camera straps so that I could just hang on to them when I'm walking out and about. Um, the next camera that I picked up is the Olympus Mew. Now this one, everywhere, it's probably ranging from like $150 to I don't know, 200 bucks. I've even seen it for $300 on eBay, which is ridiculous. But yeah, so this is the Olympus Mew. This is the one with the fixed lens, so it doesn't zoom in or out. I was able to get this for $110 on eBay. Uh, I'm a little nervous though, because it, when I close it, it doesn't completely, it's not flushed. So I'm scared of light leaks. Uh, so I did get some black masking tape to kind of close it. I have film in it currently. It's the um, What do I have? I have a black and white film in this and I've taken a few pictures on it But the flash everything seems to be working on it. It works just fine when I open it You just kind of slide the door open, but um, It's pretty easy to look through and just you know snap your picture um, the film went in just fine. It seems to be working okay. I got mine from a Japan, a seller in Japan. Um, but like I said, it's not a completely, f I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. Yeah, there. I don't know if you can see, but it's not, it doesn't sit flushed. So like I said, I mean, there's some padding in it. I won't open it because if not, it'll ruin the, it'll expose the, the film but it's not completely flush so I can just kind of close it on my own and then it sits really tight. So I'm not sure what to attribute it to or if it's gonna let light leak in or not. So I haven't put tape on it yet just so that I can see if there are any light leaks. But other than that, I mean, I got it a strap for it as well. I got these straps on Amazon for what? I think like six bucks and it came in a pack of two but I figured I could just walk around um, Japan with them and it'd be just fine. I think I'm just gonna take this Olympus Mew. I might leave the Canon one here because um, I don't need three cameras. <laughs> Plus the vlogging camera, I'm, I think I'm gonna take my big camera because I got a lens for that too. Uh, the main star of this is my contacts camera. I picked up a Contax G1. I saw mixed reviews about this, about the autofocusing being an issue, about it being, you know, a loud camera. I'm not trying to be a detective or a spy <laughs> or anything. Um, and I think out and about, 
is it really gonna make that much noise? Is, the, is that something that really bothers me? No, it doesn't. Um, it can shoot on autofocus. I have Portra 400 in this, so I have some color negative film in this currently. Um, and I have it, I got it with the planar lens. So this is the 45 millimeter lens. Um, and this is the, the Carl Zeiss lens, which is supposed to be really, really good for it. I did not get the green label one. Um, there's one, there are contacts cameras that have the green label inside and you'll see it where you put the film. Um, and those, I guess you can interchange all of the, um, Carl Zeiss lens on it. I forget what will fit on this specific camera, but that wasn't like a deal breaker for me or anything like that. But I was able to get mine, um, in damn near mint condition. It literally has a few scuffs here, but the rest of the body is completely like scratch, no dings or anything. And it's a titanium body. So it's pretty hefty and weighty. Um, the Contacts G2 is a little bit bigger than this one. Um, but it's like double the price. So I couldn't justify spending um, double the price for a camera that I'm just gonna start out learning on. Uh, but I'm super happy with it. It looks great. Uh, it works just fine. So we'll see how I get along with taking photos did get so it has a shoe mount um because the flash comes separately you have to purchase that separately uh so i picked up the flash for the tla 200 i believe it is and it's just a square flash that sits over top um still waiting for that to come in the mail it's being shipped from a japan seller as well those are the cameras that i picked up now, as far as film, I purchased, let's see, I picked up Kodak Portra 400, which is like, everybody recommends that one. Um, and it's in my Contacts G1. I picked up the O4 Delta 400, which is in the Olympus camera. I am going to do the HP5 400. I did order that off of Amazon. It's on its way, along with some more Kodak Portra 400. Uh, cause that's what I'm going to take with me, but I did. I also picked up Ektar, uh, 100 to see what that looks like. I know the blues are really vibrant for this film, but I'm going to give that a try and see if I like that kind of film. I picked up a small little notebook and this I just got at my local grocery store just to take notes, um, at, to see at what f-stops I'm shooting at. Um, as far as techie stuff. I did pick up the Canon 85mm 1.8 lens for my Canon 600D. Um, I usually shoot on like a 50mm. I have a 50mm 1.8, 1.4, and then I had a 40, 2.8, I think. Was it a 2.8? I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. Um, but to shoot like street style photos, um, a lot of people recommended the 85mm lens. So I did pick that up and that's on its way. A new, I got this little case for my new hard drive. I got a new hard drive. I mean, I mean it's nothing fancy. I got a lacy um, terabyte hard drive just cause the one that I had, it wasn't a USB-C. So I had to have this adapter and hook it up to the laptop and I'm gonna be doing a lot of editing. Now I don't want the cables flying all, I, the less cables, the better. And it's just something I've been meaning to do. So I got a new hard drive. Um, I got a new card reader to this anchor one and I got it off of Amazon and it's super tiny compared to what was it that I was using? I was using this one that it, it wasn't really like sticking in there. It jiggled. So I had to kind of like tap it a few times before it would read what was on my memory cards, which was a pain in the ass. Um, I got an extra battery for the vlog camera because I know I'm going to be vlogging like crazy. Um, and my vlog camera is a G7X Mark II. It's a cleaning ball so that I can clean these, keep these film cameras clean and get keep the dust out of them. I also picked up a new lens pen. So I had one of these. I don't know where the hell it went. I needed a new one, so I have it. That's pretty much it. Um, nothing else, nothing fancy. Um, I have a local lab that develops my 
film for me. I think they do it twice a week is what they told me. So I'll have to drive over there to drop it off or I can use this website called the, um, the Dark Room where you can just mail over your film and they'll develop it for you. Also something that I found, it's called the Nippon Photo Clinic. Nippon, I think I'm saying that right. But they're based out of New York, but they are like a camera repair shop and they actually specialize in repairing contacts cameras. So I think I might take mine for like the cleaning because they'd clean them as well. Um, but if something were to go wrong, I would be able to send my camera off to them. That's another great thing. You're able to ship your stuff to them. So if you live anywhere in the States and um, you're in need of some camera repairs, I don't think they repair point and shoots. Um, so it's just strictly like film cameras, but don't quote me on that. I'll, I'll link their website down below. Uh, I think that's, that's pretty much it. I'm super excited to keep shooting with these. Um, I'm pretty sure in a vlog, I'll let you guys, I'll let you see the first like round of photos and how they turned out. I set this at the end of the year and I can let you guys know what my experience is or maybe check in with you guys every so often every few months and let you know how I'm doing but I'll link everything down below just in case you guys are interested in picking anything up. I've just been crouched down here. Oh, sorry, my legs. I have to stretch out my legs. So often I go through these bouts where I have to like update my equipment and upgrade my camera and my lenses and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm really excited. We shall see. I'm gonna go downstairs. I have to fill some orders and yeah. I will see you guys in the next one.